get this kicked off. Who's ready to hear some security topics? Woo! All right, Kelly, you ready to go? All right, well, I'm going to introduce our first speaker tonight. Uh, we have Killian Ditch up here ready to give a speech. Guys, I want to hear it. This is Killian's first time talking to Sec KC. First time speaker. So Killian's going to be talking about cracking a physical hash tonight. Once again, I do want to remind those newbies and those that have not talked, this is a great opportunity to talk in front of a crowd. Uh, Killian's going to be giving a five-ish minute uh, talk. Let me tell you something, five minutes goes like that. So if, if you're interested in getting up and speaking, make sure you visit talk.setkc.org. Killian, I'm going to pass it over to you. All right, this is going to eat the mic. Five? Five. Okay, cool. Hopefully. Okay. Hi, my name is Killian Ditch. This is about the fifth set case that I've been to. I uh, decided, while I'm somewhat of a noob to InfoSec itself, I've been doing lockpicking for a little bit longer, just as a bit of a hobby. Some of you might know it. This is just a bit of a short presentation. Um, first and foremost, most of these slides are courtesy of Tool. Um, link is on the other pages but it's copy left by Dean and Olam. I want to make sure that everyone knows that I am reusing this material. It is attributed and it is free for others to do the same. All right. Um, basically, the idea was if you're trying to crack passwords, you usually don't have the actual password itself. You have a hash and you're trying to either determine what will make a hash the same, resulting in a collision, or finding the same number of the same characters that result in the same hash. I was thinking this kind of the same thing in regards to a key and picking the lock. You have the key, which is the password, or the hash password, and then you have picking the lock, which is setting the pins into the various um, positions that will then open the lock. I'll go into a little bit of detail in regards to how locks are actually constructed, some of them, and I have the hopes of being able to do a demonstration. Fingers crossed on that one. So first off, get some terminology. Um, you got your, your basic keyway, which is where the key goes in, of course. Um, the plug which holds it rotates. You've got the driver pin and the key pin, and of course the spring keeps everything in between. If you look at it from the side, you can have anywhere from you know, one pin, seven pins, Etc. It just keeps on getting harder whenever you do that. If you don't have a key, you can see it just kind of jams whenever you time to turn it. If you have a key, it lifts it up, the driver pin is lifted all the way out of the way, and the plug is allowed to rotate. Taking a look at it from the side, it lifts all of them up, and if you look at the shear line, all of them line up and the plug is able to rotate. Nothing is causing it to jam like it was here. So we're allowed to use, key, or we're allowed to pick locks because they're not designed optimally. Well, they're designed optimally, but they're not machined optimally. In a perfect world, they would look like that. Pretty much a straight line of pins, and they would all bind at the exact same time. No, one would be ahead of the others. In actuality, they look a little bit like this. They get worn, the men on the machine drilled properly, and so you get in hmm, get unevenness. And what that causes, as you can see, this line of pins doesn't work well if you look at it. Um, and there's that one that's binding before the others. Therefore, if you can then lift that one out of the way, you'll then be able to find the next one that binds, and so on and so forth until the lock opens. The way that you do that is like so. Basically, if you can manage to keep the plug turning and add enough friction so that when you're able to lift that driver pin all the way up, it sticks, you're then able to make sure that that one's set and move on to the next pin itself. One issue that you run into is if you lift the, the pin too high, it binds on itself. So that is, the key pin binds as opposed to the driver pin. It's bad.
That's a good lift. Moves in back, finds the next one that binds, lifts it, moves it to the next. All right, where is it? And really, it's kind of guesswork, unless you know what you're doing. And there, it overbinds. You're going to keep trying to rotate it, but you can't lift the pin up any higher, and the plug is not going to rotate any more. So, this is just kind of a little bit of a demonstration of how it all works together, where you twist it, you take your pick, and you take your tension wrench, put the tension wrench in, turn it, and you start testing the pins to try to find the one that binds. Because it's going to have a bit more friction whenever you lift it up. As opposed to the other ones, which is going to be free, that one's going to stick, you can feel that, and you lift it up. Once it lifts, the plug rotates the tiniest bit, and you know that it's set. You can then move on to the next. And you can also feel when the pins have set most of the time because they're looser when they don't have the pressure of the spring pointing down upon them, like so. Voila, the lock turns. Now, that's all the slides I had, and there's a reason for that. Because, well, this is pretty much going to be me hoping that the locks decide to cooperate. Mm. That's going to be a lot darker than I was expecting. That will do the trick. Please flash me, Bill. So, first, I've got Fairly cheap padlock. Simple padlock. Drop on the key. And you look into it, you've got the keyway, you've got the plug, some pins that you can kind of see. And the first thing that you want to do is find out how many pins are in the actual padlock. You take, so you take the flat side of the pick, usually. Take the flat side of the pick, and you can press all the pins in and then pull it out. And you probably can't hear that, but it actually does click. And it clicks four times. Click, 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 click. <laughs> and it quits. And there you know how many pins there are and about where they are in the location and relationship to the pit. Because you don't want to be jamming Take all the way to the back block and not hitting any pins. <laughs> so you set your tension wrench in, applying pressure so that the plug turns just a bit, which gets that first pin to bind. You then take a pick. I'm using a half diamond and slide it in. It's a bit of a tight lock, so hopefully this works. Excellent. So you get it in, and you start testing the pins. And that's the right one. And you test the pins, and you return back, making sure that your pressure alternates with the tension wrench. It's often this really stubborn one, and it unlocks. So that's when you're actually having to pick a lock. A quick warning to anybody who is buying cheap locks, don't get these. I'll show you why. They don't actually have any pins. They have a simple catch in the back that holds the hasp. So really, if you have a curved tool, you take it, put it into the back, and it pops open. Whoa. Almost faster than using a key, because you don't have to worry about making sure that you get that spinny bit straight. And that's all. Good job, Killian. <laughs> so, Killian, where are you posted up at if anybody wants to see that lock? No, one of those two locks. Are you back over here? Yeah, you're back over here if anybody wants to see those locks, right? Yes. I'm by the two lovely ladies over on the side. <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Killian. All 
All right, up next we have Matty McFaddy making his way down the, the runway. Hey. Uh, who needs a quick break or who wants to keep going? Quick break, say woo! All right, let's keep going. All right. All right, all right, all right. Nope, you got your minute starts now. All right. You guys should get a drink. This will take a while. So I'm curious, uh, who here by show of hands, GPS worked great to find this spot? All right, let's try the opposite of that. Uh, 